you know, the Cavs just played their 41st game of the NBA season, which means we are exactly, exactly at the halfway point of the year. So what I wanted to do since we're at the halfway point, let's do some grades. I want to grade every single Cavalier, and the way I'm going to grade them is going to be based on what I expected from them in the offseason versus what they have put out. So we're going to grade this thing on a curve. But before we get into that, I want to talk to you real quick about our sponsor, DraftKings. The NFL regular season has just wrapped up, which can only mean one thing. It's playoff time. Starting on January 14th, 14 of the best teams will contend against each other in hopes of getting to Super Bowl 57, which is always exciting. But if you're like me and your favorite team is not in the playoffs, then make the playoffs even more fun by adding some spice to it, which is why I'm teaming up with DraftKings to give all new customers a winning offer. All new customers have to do is sign up for DraftKings using my promo code CAVSBURNER. Bet at least $5 on any NFL playoff game and you'll instantly receive an additional $200 in bonus bets. Again, bet Five dollars is at least five dollars on any NFL playoff game, and you'll instantly receive an additional two hundred dollars in bonus bets. Yep, that's right. New customers bet just five dollars on any NFL game of their choosing, and they'll instantly receive two hundred dollars in bonus bets deposited into your account. Wondering what you could use the $200 in bonus bets on? Out same game parlays where you can combine multiple bets from one game, like which team will win and how much for a shot for even bigger winnings. If mobile sports betting is not available in your state, don't worry. You can get in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code CAVSBURNER. Again, it's promo code Cavs burner again, promo code Cavs burner and bet $5 on any NFL playoff game and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Cavs burner only at DraftKings Sportsbook. There are some players who are going to go ungraded for obvious reasons, like Dylan Windler, barely played, um, Ricky Rubio. Has not played that much this year. Isaiah Mobley, not much to grade there. Um, Robin Lopez, he's not going to get graded either. But there are some players that are going to get graded for sure. Um, but let's start with, well, obviously there's going to be players that are going to be graded for sure. That's kind of how this video works. I don't know why I said that. That's just content creator brain talking. All right, but let's start with, with some Low hitters, right? Uh, Dean Wade. Given what I expected from Dean Wade, he is slightly above what I expected. C plus. I would give him a C plus. Um, he has showed some versatility on on the deep, on the offensive end. He can be kind of that slasher guy at six nine, a little bit more athletic than people expect. Um, and he was a decent three point shooter when he was out there, but he hasn't been healthy long enough to really justify putting him any higher and defensively his limitations still are a thing that keeps him off the floor at least in the starting capacity lamar stevens i would say given what i expected from him he's probably at a b a b minus i would say a b minus um if he had a more consistent three-point shot lamar stevens would be a solid b um, given what I expected of him coming in. Um, he's kind of a similar deal to Dean Wade where he can play that wing position. Uh, defensively, I think he holds up against more guys than, than uh, Dean Wade does offensively. He's not as solid of a shooter, um, but he is a much better defensive player, team defense, toughness. Um, and I think he he works well enough off the ball that he's not 
a complete liability. Not what you want at that position, but I would love to see him be in the rotation in a playoff series, right? Like a back-end rotation guy. Um, maybe he's the eighth or ninth guy that comes off occasionally, gets gets some minutes in a playoff game. Um, maybe he's the spark guy. He might be the spark guy that might end up being his role is, hey, we need a spark. Let's put in Lamar Stevens to see if something happens. Speaking of spark, uh, spark guys, Raul Neto. Who has been the smart guy for the team? He's a veteran, 30 years old. Honestly, I expected nothing of him. He's given us something, so I got to put him at at least a C plus. Um, he's had a solid last two couple of games. Really hasn't played much. Um, you know, it's all C plus there for him. Not much to say. Uh, Jetty Osman. Jetty has been exactly what I've expected, and that's why I'm going to go with C, right? He has been exactly who Jetty has always been, which is a streaky scorer, an inconsistent scorer, a guy who when he's hot, he's hot, a guy who when he's cold, he's cold, a guy who can make bad decisions with the ball, a guy who can make incredible plays with the basketball because he is so willing to just try to shoot the ball no matter what, right? We've all seen it. If you've watched the Cavs any period in the last, what, seven years since he's been here or however long he's been here you've seen jetty do the jetty stuff right you've seen him make incredible and one layups or you've seen him like just take the worst three-point shot you've ever seen you've also seen him just lay the ball up in an unspeakable three-on-one situation you've seen him just do whatever right and that's kind of what jetty is he is another guy who can provide you a spark. Maybe he gets you a crazy playoff game because, like, that's kind of like the template he is. But he's not consistent enough to start, and he's not consistent enough to be a consistent contributor on this team. Um, next is Isaac Okoro. Mm. He's been better as of late. But he was so bad at the beginning of the season that I have to say, it weighed him down pretty significantly. I would say the last three weeks, he would be at a C. But he's probably, if you combine that with everything else he's done, he's probably at like a D. A D. A D plus. I'll give him a D plus. Um, the issues with Isaac are still the exact same. Right? Except for now he's less consistent shooting the ball. He's actually gotten worse shooting the ball. Um, he has more issues defensively than he did last year. He seems to only be able to play extremely well when he starts. When he doesn't start, he struggles. Um, he started against the Suns on the road yesterday. Played well. But when he doesn't start, that's where he struggles to find himself. Um, and that's kind of what he's going to be now. Um, his length has proven to be an issue. When it comes to guarding wings, now that Donovan Mitchell can guard the backcourt players, he's not being asked to guard guys who are 6'3". He's being asked to guard guys who are 6'8". His size is not big enough, so he ends up playing a style that gets him in foul trouble more often than not. So even the defensive stuff that we were excited about last season just hasn't really been there in the same way. The offensive stuff, I mean, like, hey, when he's aggressive, it's beautiful. But it's still the same thing where it's like he's just not aggressive enough on a consistent basis. Um, and that can only go on so long before it just starts to really affect how people view you um, or far, as far as grades go. Uh, Robin Lopez, not really a grade. I can give that. I didn't expect anything from him. You're not really getting anything from him. Um, Kevin Love, see, he's been about Kevin Love, right? Sometimes he's hot. Sometimes he's not. Defensively, he's been kind of a mess, um, especially when he has to get on the ball. I feel like he's going to be a lot more productive once uh, once Ricky comes back. So, yeah, he's been about what, what I've expected from Kevin. Good games here, bad games there. He's 34, too. So he was never really the most athletic guy in the world. And at 34, he's just not going to be a great defender. Um, you know, he, he, even even before then, he wasn't really a great defender in his prime. He's not going to be a great defender at 34. And come to think of it, it's almost been like 10 years since Kevin Love has been traded here, which – Sounds insane, but it's not. Like, it's like two years away. Wow. All right, anyways. Um, Mata, Mata Dime. No, I can't really grade Mata Dime. Jared Allen. Jared Allen, I would say C+. 
bordering closer to a C, and not because it's play. It's just he's been hurt so much and in and out the lineup so much that it's just not what it was last year. And given what he did last year, you kind of expected just a little bit more out of him. Um, but when he's been on, he's been great, right? Like when he's been out there, he's been great. Like it's not like he's a worse player this year. Um, he, he's, I think, slightly better. That's why I gave him a C-plus than he was uh, last year. And I think defensively, he's still that great player. It's just the consistency of him staying on the floor that's been an issue that, that's been hard for me because he's missed a, a decent amount of games this year. And I think that's also what's going to keep him from the All-Star game uh, this year. So, unfortunate um, for him, but I think that's definitely something that's going to be in there. Karis LeVert. Another dude who, like, if I'm just grading this off the last couple of weeks, he would probably get a positive grade. But, like, if I'm including the whole season, it's been so up and down for Karis. Now, it's less so than than, um, than Isaac. So, I do think this is going to be a C and above grade. But there have been, like, yeah, I mean, like, it's been the Karis LeVert show. Honestly, I'm going to go see. It's been Karis LeVert, right? This is the Karis LeVert experience, right? For every 40-point game, there's a game in which he takes 10 shots and gets two points. You know what I mean? Like, this has been the ride with Karis his whole career. Um, I think it matters less now, especially because Karis just doesn't play as an important of a role as he was asked to play when they traded for him last year. Um, and I think... That's fine. If that's what Karras is, which is a bench scorer, which is a guy who, hey, if he looks like he has it, you give him 25 minutes. If he looks like he doesn't. I made this comp on the podcast on Thursday with Ab, and I think it's a good one. But Karras Levert and Jetty Osman are like long relief pitchers in baseball. You know what I mean? Like if one of your starters don't really got it, You'll throw them out there for a few minutes and see if they have it. And if they have it, you stick with them for a little while. If they don't, you get rid of them and you just go to the bullpen. Um, and that, that's kind of how you use Jetty and Karis, right? Because sometimes Darius ain't got it, but Karis does. Sometimes Donovan don't got it, but Jetty does. You know what I mean? Like, it just kind of happens like that, and I think that's what they are, and that's exactly who they've been, right? It, it, it's not like we've been like, oh, Karras, he's been a different person. He's been efficient from the field. He has been he has a career high in true shooting. He's been exactly who Karras LeVert has been. That's why he's getting a C. Darius Garland, I would give him a B. Um, I think he's been better this year, albeit he's had some slumps here and there. But I don't think those are new. I just think they're more pronounced since we're watching Donovan Mitchell every night. And Donovan Mitchell was, like, having an insane year. Like, this isn't even, like, insane. This is insane for, like, Donovan Mitchell. This is insane for an NBA player. You know what I mean? Like, so we're watching that. And... We're comparing that to Darius because before we made the trade for Donovan Mitchell, we kind of saw Darius as somebody who could potentially be on the level of a Donovan Mitchell. And then, like, we see him next to Donovan Mitchell, and Donovan's been so much better than what we expected from him coming from Utah. But we're still kind of in that same mind spe space where we think they, they should be close. So instead of being like, man, Donovan Mitchell's great and Darius Garland's good, we go, man, Donovan Mitchell's great and Darius Garland is not as good as Donovan Mitchell. And that's unfair to Darius Garland, who's having a pretty good year. But we keep looking at like like Darius has had more 40 point games already in the first half of this year than he's had all last year. You know, 35 plus my bad, 35 plus point games. He's been scoring at a high level. He's had some incredible performances this year, more incredible than he's had last year. And I do think he's a better player than he was last year. It's just we were just happy to see him explode like that because that was the first time in a while that we saw an all-star point guard in Cleveland. You know, it's been since Kyrie. But then we bring in Donovan Mitchell, and he's right next to him, and Donovan gets 30 as easy as I breathe, and we keep looking at Darius like, man, why don't you get 30 like that? And that's a ridiculous thing to ask because Darius is not at that point of his career yet, and he might never get to that point. But he's been pretty good. I would give Darius Garland a B. Is that everybody? Did I get – oh, no, Evan Mobley. Hmm. 
I'm going to give Evan Mobley. He was this close to getting like a B plus. He had like two weeks where I was like, he's putting it together. But he's back down to a B. He's back down to a B. He's been better. Um, and he's lived up to the expectations and then a little bit. Think a little bit more if the offensive stuff is there than I expected. Now, this is my expectations. I understand that other people had crazy expectations for Karras this year, that he was going to beef up and get 30 pounds on him and become Giannis. That, I think that's insane. He's 21. Um, Giannis didn't really become Giannis until he was like 23. So give the kid a couple of years. Um, but I think more of the offensive stuff is there, right? The jumper, it, it looks good. The, you know, when he shoots those threes, he shoots about like three of them a game sometimes. They look good. Sometimes he makes them. Um, and I, I think that's important to develop for pick and pop reasons and pick and roll reasons to add some diversity to that package. Um, I think his Euro step and his comfortability with the ball, there are some things with him that still bug me, right? Um, he doesn't catch the ball well still. And I don't know if he has small hands or if he just has bad hand-eye coordination. If it's small hands, it might be a little bit of a problem. If it's just hand-eye coordination, get that man on the jugs machine for basketball, whatever they call it, and just have him catch basketballs all day. Because he, it seems like his issues when he gets into the paint are strength-related and like hand-eye related when it comes to his inability to hold on to a basketball. Like It seems like he fumbles the basketball a lot. That, that He has to figure that out. Because he does fumble. The, like, he either bobbles it when he tries to catch it or he fumbles it. Like, he's just not good at receiving the basketball and, and handling it in traffic. And I'm not talking about, like, a dribble handle. I'm talking about literally, like, just having the ball in his hands. That's the weirdest. It's everything else he's great at. It's the hand thing. But the reason he's at a B is his defensive improvement. He is so much better of a defensive player this year, and he's been a very good defensive player. It was like last year. He's made a significant leap defensively because now he's doing perimeter stuff. Now he's able to hold down the fort when, when uh, Jared Allen isn't in there. Like He's been pretty impressive defensively. Offensively, I think Moore's there. You can see him adding more to his game, and I'm fine with where he's at in his development. No, he did not make a crazy leap and become an all-star this year, but that was not the expectation for me. Um, let's go to Donovan Mitchell, A++. I mean, you talk about exceeding expectations. This isn't even close. Donovan Mitchell has been much better than anybody expected, and the expectations were high. Like, Laurie Marketing's good. He's playing really good basketball. Nobody cares in Cleveland because Donovan Mitchell's been that good. Like, it would have been nice if we could have kept Laurie, but if, given rid of, if getting rid of Laurie was the thing that made us be able to get Donovan, we're going to do that 100 times out of 100. He's so good. He's been a better defensive player than anybody expected. He's been a better offensive player. He's been a better rebounder. He's been a better uh, a leader. He's been a better in every category. 71, 11, and 8. 70, I mean, like, he's done stuff in this half of the year that, like, the amount of memorable stuff that Donovan Mitchell has done this year in just a half of the season already. It outdoes so many of the seasons, like the regular season that even LeBron had, where like, you know, LeBron had a couple of memorable moments every regular season, like a handful. But Donovan's had like 12 already. It's been crazy. It's been crazy. Uh, much better than anybody expected. Super efficient, right? That was one of the worries was like, hey, he's not going to be an efficient scorer. He's super efficient. He's actually one of the most efficient guys in the NBA. Um, another one of the worries was defensively, right? We didn't want to run into the same problem we had with Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. Nah, not a problem because, like, Donovan doesn't have those issues defensively. He's long. He's strong. It just ain't the same as, like, trying to throw out uh, – uh, um, Colin Sexton back there with Darius Garland. Like, it's actually created a problem for um, Isaac Okoro, to be honest, how good Donovan's been defensively, because now Isaac has to guard bigger players, and he's just not good at doing that. So, yeah, Donovan Mitchell, A++, A++++. That's why this team is sitting at the record that they are. It's why this team is seen as a serious threat is because they have Donovan Mitchell. Everybody else is good, but Donovan Mitchell is the one thing that puts them over the top. 
those are my grades for the cast let me know your thoughts in the comment section below y'all have a great day have an even better night